Hello, I'm Father Philip Dabney, a Redemptorist from Washington, D.C. Welcome again to our monthly Praying with the Icon of Our Mother Perpetual Help. The theme of my homily today is Mary, the Woman of Faith. Last month, we looked at the gold color that penetrates the whole image of Our Mother Perpetual Help. And this golden background, it's symbolic of the uncreated light of God coming through the image of Jesus and Mary and flowing out to us as we gaze upon the icon. Today, we'll listen to Brother Dan Korn speak to us about the face of Mary, one of the elements of the icon that invites us into the mystery of God's love. As we begin our reading of the icon of our mother of Petra Help, we are drawn to her face, which is outlined by her veil. In her veil, we notice an eight-pointed star. This is an ancient symbol used to identify an image of Mary. In the catacombs of the second century, we find that the image of the woman with child and a star above her head. So the eight-pointed star on the veil of Mary tells us that she is the one who will reveal the mystery of Christ to us. Next, our eyes are drawn to notice her penetrating gaze, which invites us into this sacred space for us to reflect on. We notice that her right ear is exposed from under her veil and the smallness of her mouth. These elements in her face teach us that in order to hear the voice of God, we must be silent and listen. The first lesson of reading the icon is to create spaces in our daily life for the action of God. Mary's example of listening and her attentiveness to the movements of God are her teachings to us about the importance of being quiet and listening. We are to follow Mary's attitude in our own lives of making sure that we allow the time to be silent in the presence of God. May Mary, our mother of perpetual help, obtain for us the grace to imitate her in awareness of the movement of God that surrounds our daily experiences. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondering what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is to be the sixth month for, who was called, for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. 
Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. During World War II, not only the Jews, but also other groups were persecuted by the Nazis, including Catholics, disabled persons, and gypsies. The story is told of a gypsy family who was part of a traveling circus in Poland. And during one of their acts, a young girl would jump from a high wire with no net below, and her father would catch her. Now, one morning, the father had gone out early, and the young girl was alone in the apartment building where they were staying. A stranger came to the door and said that he had a message from her father. The message was that the Nazis had come into the town and that they had to escape. But it was too dangerous for the father to return by daylight. So he said that night, at two in the morning, he would stand at the northwest corner of the apartment building. His daughter was to jump, and he promised to be there to catch her so that they could escape. The young girl was confused. She didn't know the messenger, and she wasn't sure these were the words of her father. She wasn't even sure which was the northwest corner of the building. But as the day went on, her father did not return, and she began to hear news that the Nazis had indeed come into the town. Having only the word of her father's promise, she went to what she had hoped was the northwest corner of the building at the exact time she was told and called out into the darkness, Father, are you there? Immediately she heard her father's voice. Yes, I'm here. Jump. I'll catch you. The girl cried. But I can't see you. I know, her father called. I know. But I can see you. And the little girl jumped safely into her father's arms. This story speaks of a trust so strong and complete that it's almost hard to believe. The young girl knew from experience that her father could catch her whenever she jumped. But now in the dark, in this life and death moment and unable to see him, she had to trust him even more beyond what she knew. She had to believe in his words, in a promise that would not be fulfilled until she jumped and was safely caught. As remarkable as this story is, how much more remarkable is the story of Mary of Nazareth, who believed that what God was promising her through an angel would be realized. This is what her cousin Elizabeth joyfully announced to her. Blessed are you, who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. Reflect for a moment about the utter trust expressed in Mary's simple response to the angel. Let it be done to me as you say. Gabriel did not leave her with a here is your life scenario. No details whatsoever never told her she would become a refugee with her infant son to escape a king's anger, never told her that when her child grew up, some of his relatives would think he was mad, that the people of Nazareth would try to cast him over a cliff, never told her what aging Simeon foretold later. This child is marked for the fall and the rise of many in Israel, to be a symbol that will be rejected. Indeed, indeed, a sword shall pierce you too. 
never told her that he would die shamefully on a cross between two thieves, but not to worry, for he would rise again shortly. God asked of Mary only this, trust me, and she did totally. That is why Luke seeks in, seek, sees Mary as a perfect disciple. Jesus would make that clear later on. My mother and brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. Mary listened and Mary did. It's no surprise then that in the Christian tradition, Mary has long been seen as the woman of faith. And this woman of faith, she invites us to trust as she trusted, that what the Lord has promised you and I will be fulfilled, will come to pass, will be realized. But we know this isn't easy. As with Mary, so with you and me. Baptized in Christ, God has not provided us with a scenario for our lives, a forecast of what will happen to any one of us. God did not tell us what color our skin would be, what manner of children would be born of us, whether we should live in poverty or plenty, in love or rage, when we shall die and how. We can't even predict our tomorrows. What then has God promised us in Christ? That Jesus will never abandon us, will always be there for us, no matter how absent he seems, how far away, no matter how far we stray, no matter how faithless we become. That, e that even if we desert him, he will never wave goodbye to us. The power of the Most High, God's Holy Spirit, will always cast a shadow over you. That shadow is a sign of God's presence. I began my homily today with a story about a young girl who jumped safely into her father's arms. I first told that story in October 2010 during a novena service to our mother perpetual help. So in conclusion, let me offer you a second story. It's a letter that came to me two weeks later from a woman in Boston who had heard the story of the young girl while watching the same novena on Catholic TV. She wrote, my sister Kathleen was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. And when she was at the very end of her life and unconscious, my brother-in-law asked me if I could say something. We, my mother, my sisters, Anne and Mary had recited all our traditional prayers and still Kathy fought to stay with her family. And I remembered your story of the young gypsy and I simply said, jump Kathy, he can see you. Five minutes later, she died quietly. So what can we do during this Easter season as believers? When the chips are down, like Mary, jump. Speak the words of her son Jesus on the cross. Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit, my entire self. But not just in our moments of desperation or fear, not only at the very end, now, tomorrow, each night while falling asleep. It's our faith response to the power of Christ's resurrection manifested in our daily lives and to his coming to each one of us, like the apostles in the early morning while they were fishing offshore. Whether you can see Jesus is not all important. 
He can see you. He does. Always. Jump. Please join in singing this litany to Mary, our mother. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Mother of mercy, pray for us. Mother of Christ, pray for us. Mother of divine grace, pray for us. Mother most pure, pray for us. Mother undefiled, pray for us. Amiable, pray for us. Mother 
most admirable for us. Holy Mary, intercede for us, we pray. Mother of our Savior, pray for us. Virgin most Virgin most powerful, pray for us. Virgin most merciful, pray for us. Mother of our Creator, pray for us. Mirror of justice, pray for us. Seat of wisdom, pray for us. Vessel of honor, pray for us. the covenant, pray for us, gate of heaven, pray for us, morning star, pray for us, help of Christians, pray for us, star of the sea, pray for us, health of the sick, pray for us, refuge of sin. Comfort for the suffering, pray for us. Holy Mary, intercede for us, we pray. Queen of heaven, pray for us. Queen of martyrs, pray for us. of apostles, queen of confessors, queen of prophets, queen of the saints, queen of Mother of perpetual help, with greatest confidence we come before your holy icon to seek your intercession. We think of you, Mother, at the foot of the cross. Your heart must have been broken to see your son in agony, but your joy was great when he rose from the dead, victorious over the powers of evil. Mother of sorrows, pray for us during these difficult times. Help us not to lose heart. Intercede for your people who are afflicted. Comfort your people who are vulnerable and anxious. Protect all those who put their lives at risk. Inspire our leaders to make good decisions. Change our hearts so that we may act responsibly. Teach us to trust in God's love and mercy and to share with you the joy of having courageously faced up to the challenges of life. Amen. We hope you have enjoyed this experience of praying with the icon of our Mother Perpetual Help. We thank you for joining us. We offer this prayer experience every third Saturday of the month, so join us again on Saturday, May 16th, beginning at 10 a.m. The Lord be with you. May the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of Mary and perpetual help, be with you to defend you, within you to sustain you, before you to lead you, behind you to protect you, and above you to bless you all the days of your life. In the name of the Father 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection implored your help or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly to you. O Virgin of virgins, my mother, to you I come, before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother, 